So most Dragon Ball Z fans disregard the movies and claim that it is not part of the official canon of the series. Although this is true because Akira Toriyama said that the films take place in an alternative dimension. However, I have actually done a lot of homework and I have put together the timeline of Dragon Ball Z combining the movies with the show and this is how it would work if it actually made sense. I actually managed how to fit the show with the movies and blend them together in a perfect, well, almost perfect, timeline. With uh, two tiny little hiccups. But other than these two hiccups, all the movies actually line up together. And they can actually be canon. So, here we go. You may be thinking that the beginning of DBZ begins with the Saiyan Saga, with Raditz, but it actually, the first beginning of Dragon Ball Z is Dead Zone, the movie. This is the very beginning. Dead Zone is the beginning because Piccolo and Goku are still enemies, they even fight a little bit after they think Garlic Jr.'s dead. Here we have Toddler Gohan in his yellow outfit, still wearing the, the hat with the, with the Dragon Ball on top of it. The film also shows that Kami, at this time, is still the guardian, guardian of Earth. Then after that, we have the Raditz Saga, and the Saiyan Saga, and all that. Piccolo dies. Now after the Saiyan Saga in the TV series, the next saga is the Namek Saga. But, however, we have to change things up a little bit uh, in order to make this timeline work. Let me explain. In order for the movie timeline to work with the TV show timeline, what we have to change is, is the death of Piccolo. Now Piccolo dies at the end of the Saiyan Saga, defending Gohan, right? Okay, but we have to change when Piccolo dies. So the next chapter, chapter 3, is the movie The World's Strongest. This is the only place I could see this movie fitting in the timeline if we say that Piccolo didn't die at the end of the Saiyan Saga. Because in The World's Strongest, Piccolo is still alive. Of any place in the timeline, this is where it makes the most sense to be. It's the only option. Goku fights Dr. Wheelo at the end, and he doesn't turn Super Saiyan because he, he can't do that ability yet. So the only way he could defeat Dr. Wheelo is using the Spirit Bomb. At this time, The World's Strongest fighters are Goku, Piccolo, and Master Roshi, pretty much. So, this is pretty much where this needs to be in the timeline. Gohan and Piccolo are friends because Piccolo turns evil because of the technology and Gohan is surprised. It has to be here in the timeline. Now you may think, oh well after the world's strongest, well then it has to be the Namek Saga, right? Wrong. That's a little too early. After the world's strongest, the next chapter is Lord Slug, the movie. Why? Because in this film, they're still on Earth and Goku doesn't know how to turn Super Saiyan yet. So in this film, as King Kai explains, Goku turns into an early version of what could be considered a Super Saiyan when he fights Lord Slug, when he gets really angry. And so since it's early in the timeline, still play takes place on Earth, it has to fit here. Now this is where Piccolo dies. Like Piccolo does fight Lord Slug in this film, and it's significant because Lord Slug is also a Namek. Okay, so they both fight each other, right? But what if in this film, Piccolo is killed by Lord Slug? That's right. To make this timeline work, all we have to do is change when Piccolo dies. I swear, this, the, Piccolo's death is the only thing that does not make the timeline work. But if we just move his death two sagas over, counting the, uh, calling the movies sagas still, then the timeline works. I swear, as we keep going, you'll see that. So, let's say Piccolo dies at the hands of Lord Slug, defending Gohan, in the same way he was defending Gohan against Nappa's attack at the end of the Saiyan Saga. You just change it here where Lord Slug kills him there. Okay, so now the next saga is the Namek Saga, because they decide to go to Namek to get the Dragon Balls to bring Piccolo back to life. Right, so then the fifth chapter in the entire series is the Namek Saga and the Captain Ginyu Saga. Okay, so it's the same thing, Goku's training, eventually he gets there with the, with the capsule, you know, all that stuff, all that fits. 
Piccolo is now dead. He's with Yamcha, Chiaotzu, and Tien on King Kai's planet. All makes sense. Everything is working so far. All we had to do was move the Namek Saga to uh, three pieces down. So chapter six is Tree of Might Saga. I know it seems preposterous to put it this in, in this spot in the timeline because they're still on Namek, right? And the Tree of Might takes place on Earth. But actually, when the Tree of Might was originally aired on television on Toonami, it aired in between episodes 45 and 46 of the Namek Saga, when it originally aired on Toonami during the 90s. Because they actually wanted the Tree of Might to be a saga, to be connected to the Namek Saga. Which is really awesome that uh, the, the Ocean Dub people, the Pioneer, really wanted to fit the movies into the timeline of the show. And with a little bit of editing, you could actually fit the Tree of Might in this timeline and it still makes sense. The only thing you need to do is two changes. For the dubs, you, you make it that the Tree of Might is planted on the planet Namek, not Earth. So that's the first thing you need to change. So every time uh, you're watching those episodes, just change all the dialogue when they say Earth to Namek. Pretty simple, pretty easy. A little bit of editing maybe to make the sky look green and the, and the grass look blue. Yeah, so what they did back in the day was they actually split the movie The Tree of Might into three separate episodes of the TV series. And like I said, it aired in between episodes 45 and 46 of the Namek Saga. And they actually had episode recaps as well. So once again, uh, the only problem we have is Piccolo. Uh, the green man strikes again, uh, giving us another problem. Piccolo is the only thing that is irksome to the timeline. So at this time, Piccolo is still dead, right? So how could he be fighting in the Battle of the Tree of Might? Well, what you can do is um, you could have had the announcer make some kind of statement that King Kai used his powers... Or, or, or use Baba's powers, you know, the witch, to allow Piccolo, Tien, Chiaotzu, and Yamcha to appear on the planet Namek to help fight in the battle of the Tree of Might. And after this battle, they all had to return back to King Kai's planet. And that includes Piccolo. And then the rest of the Namek saga continues, and in the show, they bring Piccolo back on Namek with the Dragon Balls. I actually have a little theory that back in the day when they did this, they were actually planning on basically making the Tree of Might be on planet Namek, but they screwed up in the dubs and they should have said the word Namek. There's one piece of evidence of this, other than the fact that it aired in between episodes 45 and 46. If you look at the Tree of Might uh, poster, uh, which they had in, in the U.S., if you look into the background, the sky is actually green. That's correct. That's right. Your eyes are not deceiving you. And below it is the ocean. And of course the ocean's blue. But if you didn't really notice the ocean, it also looks like the land. So there you go. Right here on the Tree of Might poster, the sky is green and the, gra and the, the ground or the o is blue. That's right. 